So I have something I need to show you. Uh-huh. Um, I was watching... I, I have a lot of these. They're these, like, like instructional videos from the 50s. Oh. And this one is by far the funniest one I've ever seen. I was going to show you something different today, but I, like, was like, no, we have to we have to watch this today. Okay, okay. It's basically just a movie where the narrator bullies a teenage girl for 15 minutes to and help her do better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. As you do. Oh, McGraw-Hill. Is that a... Is that a thing? Yeah, that's a, that's a, it's a big, um, textbook oh. publisher thing. Oh, that makes sense. Like, they played these in school? Yeah, I'm sure they probably, yeah, yeah, I bet they did. Psychology for Living series. There's a book, too. <laughs> her bed's better than mine, her bedroom. <laughs> I know, I was like, they were trying to make her, like, room look like it's in disarray. It looks better than mine. It's and definitely I felt better than out. mine. Like, <laughs> All the things just kind of casually draped, like, oh no. As she cries in the background. I cry quieter than her. You don't want to let people know your feelings. Yeah, same. I think I think we've had more practice. It's a little late for tears, isn't it, Barbara? <laughs> it's a little late for tears. <laughs> like, buckle up, buttercup. Even though you didn't know it was going to happen today, you've still had your whole life to prepare for it. <laughs> of course, you've gotten into the habit of not being prepared. Boy, so right out the gate, <laughs> the narrator sounds just like that inner voice that you have when you're mentally ill. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's like, that's how my anxiety talks to me all the time. <laughs> this poor girl. <laughs> she looks so sad. And now it's a little late, isn't it? Also, her crying was not matching up with the, so they, no. they did wild lines for crying. You're a creature of habit, Barbara. We all are. Unfortunately, not all of your habits are good ones. You suck at being a person, is basically what you just said. This was how your day started. Started wrong. This is how your day started. It started wrong. I, I see nothing wrong with this, but I mean, go on. Girl's not even conscious yet, and he's like, hey, you idiot, get up. This is a different girl. Yeah, this is the girl... Um, that they pit this other girl against. To be like, oh! see how much better than you she is? Okay, okay. Gotcha. For psychology reasons. Uh, obviously so. <laughs> Your neighbor, Helen, is a creature of habit, too. But she got up when the alarm went off. <laughs> the shade! I don't need to be called out by something that was made almost 70 years ago. The shade! <laughs> Because, Barbara, that's what she really had in mind when she said it. Sure, she, you know, she planned on using this alarm when you said it. Well, also, yeah, Helen wakes up with her hair perfectly done and her makeup on. I would wake up happy, too. Helen has trained herself to know what she's going to do, in what order, and where the things are to do it with. I don't smile at myself in the mirror. Uh -uh. As it turned out, it was a special day for Helen, too. But she makes a habit of being ready for special days. <laughs> she starts by having a place for things and keeping them there. Well, that's easy to do when you don't use them. I just kind of look over my shoulder at the, the baskets of things that I know are like precariously placed back here behind this curtain. <laughs> you know, that's why there's a curtain. Mm -hmm. Hides the magic. Yes. She uses taste in selecting her clothes. But more than that, she keeps them clean. Boy! We're two minutes in. You've seen Bo Burnham's inside. Yeah. Where he's like, all my clothes are dirty. So that's what it, that's basically what they just said. Like, all your clothes are dirty. And by the way, they're ugly. Barbara. And she's able to match the right skirt with the right sweater. The right skirt with the right sweater. My mom in the 19, she grew up in the 19, late 1950s, early 1960s. She had underwear that was labeled for the days of the week. Really? Yeah, and she felt really out of sorts when she wore the wrong one, and here I am wearing <laughs> socks that are just don't match anything. She never understood why I like to wear my character socks, and they don't match anything. Mm. And she has to match everything. Like, she was brought up that way. I still, because like... Because of this person. <laughs> look, if I'm going somewhere, like, if I'm going to work in the morning, I will pull out any two socks. It doesn't matter if they match. It doesn't matter if, like, one is, like, a... They are lucky Like, I a knee-high and one is, like, a little, like, footy sock. If they're socks, they're lucky that I have socks. They're lucky I am dressed and somewhat conscious. Like, Sometimes I get a call time and it's so early, I'm like, do I need socks? Do I think I could get away without socks today. <laughs> do I need to be awake? This was going to be a special day for you. But you hadn't gotten very far with your preparations for it. Who prepares for the day? Was your whole family asleep? 
No, your mother was up. Had been for an hour. Barbara! Barbara! Barbara, get up, you'll be late for school! Wake up, Barbara! Barbara Manatee! <laughs> If your mother stopped acting like a second alarm clock for even one day, you'd probably think it was a dirty... Pete's sake, I hear you. A dirty what? <laughs> I need to know. It cut out. And but dirty. It almost, like, it cut out in just the right way that it almost sounded like she swore and they had to censor her. Yeah. I don't know what they dropped. It, a dirty know. something. Dirty. <laughs> even if you're not really well-mannered, you could make a habit of being civil. You started your day with no plan at all. What is she doing? I'm up! You didn't seem at all appreciative. Couple things. One, you should have been nicer when she yelled at you from downstairs to get up. Second of all, I will concede that Barbara has open makeup here and then yeah. like clothes over the open canisters yeah that's that's a little bit of a problem barbara like but, i'm not gonna shame you for it but that is a little bit of an issue you forgot other important things today but she's being like emotionally abused by the narrator so you know what we're gonna give her that one yeah little lies are such a firm foundation for big ones you started your day with no plan at all I start my day not even sure if I'm gonna wake up, so like I don't plan. Like if I plan, I I might just jump out a window. Like I don't want to know these things. No, I just kind of wake up and try to be surprised by life. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like that's that's a good that's a good policy. I feel like if I plan, then I'll I'll remember with my anxiety everything that's gonna go wrong, and I just, just might as well just take it as it comes. Yeah. Looking for your hairbrush? You just had it in your hand. She's not looking for her hairbrush. She's looking for a clip clip you forgot other important things today like what you gonna tell us you meant to fix that collar but you've gotten into the habit of putting things off <laughs> same you found the algebra notebook you lost and then probably lost it again but she didn't lose it it was like right in the top drawer <laughs> the ski pants you meant to put away in the chest and then she's like and the ski pants you meant to put away they're in the drawer they're not they're not folded but they're in the drawer they're in the drawer i mean that's half the battle right there the afghan you started to knit last summer at least she knows how to knit i've got a dress that i've been trying to sew since like 2019. <laughs> and oh yes the sweater you were looking for just go to, go to school in your pajamas it's fine you decided to cover the spots on your sweater with a scarf what what did you put? <laughs> Is that like a thing of paint? What is that? How do you get a spot that big right here? I don't know. It's it's very carefully placed. Also, Barbara, I don't know why she thinks doing this will get the stain out <laughs> like without any soap or anything. She's just like, eh. If you had a habit plan for your mornings, you might get off to a decent start someday. <laughs> someday? <laughs> Helen has a habit plan. All three always enjoyed Mr. Elliot's comments on the news. They don't all partake in the news. No. They just let the, the, the man partake in the news. And, and then, then he, he comments on yes. the news. To, he relays it back yes. to them. Yes. Like a game of telephone. Also, have you ever uh, commented on the news with your parents? No. No. My dad will, like, stop everything at 6.30 every weeknight to watch Lester Holt. <laughs> He'll be like, everybody, shh, Lester Holt is on. This is important. And then if he's if he if we're watching something else and it goes over time, he will rewind. He will he will TiVo. Well, we don't TiVo anymore. It's not 2002, but like he yeah. will the current version of TiVo, Lester Holt. Why is the toaster on the table? I don't know. What is it plugged into? I don't know. <laughs> the table doesn't look big enough. If that was ever a common practice, it fell out of practice <laughs> far before we were born. I've never Why seen that is happen. The toaster on the table it bothers me. <laughs> As they're partaking in, in his retelling of the news. Just in case you need an emergency toast, it's right there. You don't have to get up. It was time to get started for office and school. Helen's dad would drop her on the way downtown. <laughs> Not drop her off, just, just drop her. Push her out of the car. Oh my god, so you remember Family? Yeah. This, that movie that we worked on that yeah. was like... It, it's it's all about insane clown posse. Well, there's a big part about an insane clown posse. Yeah. So the first day I showed up to work was that day that all the insane clown posse. There were hundreds yeah, of clowns. Pretty sure I was there that day too. Yeah, there were hundreds of clowns in a field, and it was overnight out in the middle of nowhere. My mom, terrified of clowns, she didn't want to stop the car. She was like, "No, my God, get out of the car, just go." Rolling stop. It's like a rolling stop, and I'm like, "Where is my?" So like, I get out of the car in this rolling stop. I like practically have to tuck and roll, and then she like 
throws me my work bag, is like, bye! And then she texts me, she's like, I don't want to come back and get you. I'm like, well, see, here's the thing, Mom. You're gonna kind of have to. <laughs> How else am I supposed to get home? Don't leave me! Don't <laughs> I really don't want to be stranded out here with 300 clowns. They were all, they were nice. Well, all some the, of them were. All the clowns that I met. I all know the you... ones you met, the ones I met, boy, howdy. <laughs> there was there was a lot of hinky stuff going on. Oh, yeah, there were those clowns that were having sex in the parking lot. Yeah, and in the tents, and, like, they were doing drugs, and, you know. I Oh, I had a, I had a juggalette uh, um, hit on me. She, she asked me to come into one of the tents with her. <laughs> and it's all, like, all perfectly fine things if we're not in a work environment. Like, right? I mean, you know, it's... I know, I know the, I know it's available, um, the movie's available in Canada, Netflix Canada, but I don't think it's, I don't know where else it's available. I've never um, seen it. I don't want to see it, so, um, <laughs> I don't want to know anything about it. <laughs> I want to see it. Maybe I'll watch it with you. Yeah. Yeah, it was to really the day. set's fault. I don't want to, because, I don't, I don't want to imply that, that, uh, all of ICP is a, is no. a bad group of people. No. It's just the set. The set was terrible. The set was absolutely awful, and they... And I don't think they were paying, no, like, half of them, so not, I would be angry, They too. were there on, under the impression that they were getting a free concert um, which from Which was ICP, not what happened. Which was not what happened at all, and so they were rightfully upset, um, and it was... It, there, yeah. The fact of the matter is, is it, it was not pleasant, and Avery's mom threw her out of, out of the van <laughs> while it was moving. Anyway, bullying this teenager. Yes! <laughs> your brother was ready, but your father couldn't wait for you. Or you could have driven to school with him. See, I feel like this is just kind of like a meta-commentary on what it's like to be mentally ill. Basically. She's like getting ready and she's like, Helen next door probably doesn't have these problems. Probably. He used to enjoy that drive, too. Oh, I used to enjoy a lot of things before I got mentally ill. No time for milk, or even to say good morning. How much time does milk take? I mean, not as much time as I think they're implying. I put too much of that hobnob in my mouth and now I can't <laughs> swallow it. Yeah, that's Th on Those me. eggs are still jiggling. I thought she was going to run through the bush. <laughs> I thought she was going to, like, either run through it or jump over it. I was really hoping. Like those old goofy films where he's just, like, running yes. through it. I thought that was what was going to happen. All your neighbors knew how late it was when you went by at your regular dog trot. <laughs> you were late for school this morning. But then you're almost always late. Okay. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> wow. And you're guilty about it. More so because your lateness is habitual. <laughs> you're in a rut with a bad habit. And the longer you stick with the habit, the deeper the rut gets. Your whole life is going down the tubes, Barbara. <laughs> I mean that this is this is really no this is like shaming people for being mentally ill. Look at the side line, long glance that sh that that Helen is giving Barbara. Helen, sweetheart, you are blessed with good genes. Not all of us are blessed with healthy good genes. Well, and she's got like a well-adjusted family. They yeah. like yeah. She's this this poor girl's just got a mom that yells at her she's all the time. Doing the like, best she she's can. trying hard, Helen. She showed up. She got out of bed. That's more than I can do most right? days. Stop being so judgmental, Helen. When you saw Helen, you suddenly felt envious. Oh, that <laughs> fake smile. But more than that, you felt a distaste for your sloppy ways. God. And you knew you could do something about them if only... If only you tried? I feel bad for Barbara. I'm def- I- th this is- it's, it's too close to home. It really <laughs> is, though. Like, honestly. <laughs> you were just chatting away with Helen when it happened. Oh, so Helen's like a fake friend. You got that, you got that, like, frenemy dichotomy going All on. All right. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Some of the crowd's coming over to my house right after school. Do you think you two could make it? So let me get this straight. For psychological reasons, they decided that the only way to teach girls how to, like, be on time to places was to pit them against each other. Yeah. I mean, now I can see where all of this toxic woman stuff that we're trying to get rid of nowadays like came from like this was this was the catalyst marketing. this very movie this broke the multiverse <laughs> there's also nobody in that classroom nope. each school year sees new groups forming old ones reforming she had nowhere to go you see that they cut away she had nowhere to go at that point. you knew this afternoon that you were making a bad impression and you knew how easy it is not to be invited again oh 
low blow. And how quickly you can be left out of the crowd. Not everyone's social. Is she knitting? What is what is she doing? It looks like knitting, but but it's got little dangly bits on it. I mute it. I muted it. Oops, sorry. <laughs> like a Girl Scout something. Probably. Just to make Barbara feel worse about herself. Oh, yeah. You were embarrassed by your messy hair and the fingernails you had neglected to clean. Your hair looks better than my hair, like, most days. I like how she moved the scarf out of the way so the stain's just right there. Yeah. You worried about the spots on your sweater, Barbara. That's not a spot. That's like a lake. Yeah, what happened there? Something happened there. And it was something very bad from the looks of it. I mean, it looks like she hemorrhaged blood. It Poor does. Barbara. Poor Barbara, she's having a hard time. <laughs> you didn't find it very pleasant comparing yourself with the others. Really, I wonder how that got started. I wonder how we can stop kids from comparing themselves to others. I wonder. I said, what do you think? You weren't listening. You seldom do. Some of us have social anxiety, narrator lady, or Helen. I just feel like I should blame Helen for everything. I feel like that's fair. Helen's not helping. But that's what they, but that's also what they want us to do, so I don't know. I, not everybody feels like talking. No, not everybody is good at listening because they're worried about what they're going to say. Like my, my, I was standing in the other day and we, um, they moved, well, my actress put some stuff in a, in a, in some drawer, a, a chest of drawers. And we moved from the middle drawers to the left side. And I'm very dyslexic. Mm. And so I spent the next five minutes until my actress arrived rehearsing to myself to tell her that it's the left-hand side drawers that we moved because I was terrified I yeah. was going to say something wrong. Yeah. Some of us are like that. Mm -hmm. It's basically just like if you have mental illness or neurodivergency, yeah. Helen will hate you next yeah. door. <laughs> basically. They were talking about a popular book. All your friends were interested but you never got into the habit of reading books. Does she not know how to read? <laughs> Some of us are dyslexic. Yeah. Narrator. And then she married back to the same kind of lying. Well, that's why I think the book's stupid. Well, well, Helen doesn't like it. Helen thinks the book's stupid. <laughs> no, you added nothing to that conversation. The conversation that cut off as soon as she left the room, I don't think it was a very important conversation. And Helen said it was a stupid book, and I'm supposed to worship the full. <laughs> I almost said the water that Helen walks on like she's Jesus. <laughs> that's basically the overall tone. <laughs> it is. I always have to force myself to do new things. I'm the same way. I didn't even want to go to my first concert because I thought it would be too long-haired. Too long-haired? Is that what they said? Maybe that's an old saying. Huh. My mother had to drag me to the museum. <laughs> but they have a wonderful costume exhibit there. Women are only interested in clothes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You've never taken an interest in music or politics or art. Okay. Well, Helen hasn't either. She's not allowed to read the newspaper. <laughs> Yeah, her dad forbids it because yeah. he has nothing to re yeah. reiterate to her if she yeah. reads the newspaper. Exactly. We, we, we always go to the beach. Every year we take a cottage at S. You've only been once. Oh, she's trying to she's trying to integrate herself in, and they're all just giving her the cold shoulder, man. You couldn't help interrupting, could you? She's. You get mad at her for not being part of the conversation, and then you get mad at her for trying to be part of the she conversation. Can't win. Nope. We all like to talk about ourselves, but a soliloquy isn't a conversation. She just said like two things. Conversation is a two way street, but for you, it's either one way or a dead end. <laughs> I mean, same, but. My oh, goodness. No. I feel so bad for her. What is that painting? What is going on there? That looks like a horror story. It looks like a one-legged child. I know the child is like in motion, but it looks like the, the child has one leg and is just like watching us. In all society, at all ages, we know that people are going to talk about other people. Unfortunately, our faults are often more discussed than our good points. You're talking about gossip, sweetheart. Imagine going to school and it's like, okay, kids, today we're going to learn how to keep people from gossiping about you because if they do, it's your fault. Basically, that's basically <laughs> what she's saying. But perhaps worst of all is our own disappointment in ourselves and the remarks we imagine our friends are making about us. Aww. I now know why she was crying so loud. 
I, I forgive her. I do too. The spotted sweater isn't shiny. And bad manners are still bad manners no matter what you call them. Oh, the voice has taken on, like, it's no longer just a, just an, like, an ambiguous narrator. Yeah. It's now the voices of all of her peers. Yeah. This is like a horrifying social commentary. The memory of this day stands between you and your whole pattern of behavior. I thought she was going to say your happiness, and I was like, what? I thought so too. Where will you start? Your complexion? That starts with soap and water. What? <laughs> and goes on to regular meals and the right kind of food. What? <laughs> so if you only start to do something, although I don't think that stain's gonna come out, but if you only start with soap and water, eventually you'll have your, your whole life together. If you weren't so dirty and you ate better. <laughs> Jeez. And if you weren't so depressed and if you just tried harder. Your clothes? Not just clean when your mother takes them away from you, but a system of cleaning. Fun fact. So, not that I've ever done this, but I've always kept it in the mind. When you're so depressed and you're having a hard time and their clothes are dirty, you just get into the shower with your clothes. Oh. Just wash what you can. Okay. And then shake them off, dry them. See, my, my, my life hack for when I'm so depressed I feel like I can't get out of bed. Uh, is, like, you know when you have, like, dirty plates? Yeah. I, like, I, <laughs> I've, like, put, I've, like, covered them with, like, shower caps so that they uh, yeah. don't, like, attract bugs. And yeah. I'm like, I'll clean them when I can get out of bed. You, you do what you can to yeah. get through. It's what, Narrow. it's life. Helen checks her clothes for cleaning when she takes them off. That's a habit of hers. Um, um, and then she hangs them back up again? Um, no. Doesn't seem like Helen's very clean. That doesn't narrator. seem clean at all. Again, maybe Helen's doing her best, but still. But still, like... Seems like a double standard, narrator. Yeah. This morning, Helen took her skirt from the front of the closet. Why does that matter? Tonight, she hangs it in the back. That's a habit, too. So she, all, all this is reminding me of is when they don't want to wash stuff on The Walking Dead, so they just spray it with vodka. Yeah, and then everything just smells like vodka and dirt. Yeah. Yeah. And apples for some reason, yeah. I, I guess, because because the because of whatever they put in the mixture. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It doesn't smell good. No. Also, I like how they're like, you should be more like Helen. She gives her clothes time to fester and let the bacteria grow in an orderly fashion. And breathe. <laughs> it gives clothes a chance to hang, rests the fabric. But shouldn't it be in the hamper to be washed? Do you only wash stuff if there's a big stain on it? What's I'm telling face? you, again, it feels like a double standard. It feels like Helen gets away with doing her best, and, and, and Barbara just gets ganged up on. And she's also doing her best. It just looks different than Helen. Yeah. She's gonna set her alarm, guys. On purpose, because she plans on getting up. I saved a thing. It was from that girl. I sent you the TikTok where she does the Miss Minutes. Yes. Thing. I saved a. I saved an alarm where it's like, this is your reminder that you could break the multiverse if you don't get out of bed. I feel like the threatening this helps me in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Good habits save time and energy and give us greater freedom to do those extra things we want to do. So energy, to, or whatever she just said, to do the extra stuff, it was, what was it called? It was something very specific where, like, you you steal time at the end of the day because you're so stressed out throughout the entire day that you feel like you didn't have time to do exciting stuff. So you just steal it. I forgot. There, there's a specific word for it. Yeah. But also, what? You could do all of this so that you have time to read a book that you don't like. Because <laughs> she, she doesn't like, like the, the book. book. Yeah, you're right. Helen is living a lie. <laughs> she is. Yes, a good start. Poor Barbara. I know. She looks happy now. Oh, everything's cleaned up all of a sudden. <laughs> but these improvements are not yet habits, not by any means. They're not good enough yet. No. They must happen again and again. It's kind of like eating. Like, I don't know if this is like a depression thing, but it's like I've, I just fed my body and I have to do it all the time. Yeah. It's just like, I just fed you. I just cleaned <laughs> up this mess. Like, we keep it clean for 10 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. If you try, really try, if you try really hard. She just scrubbed the whole room from top to bottom after she got home at the end of the night. She just got bullied into doing something that was socially acceptable for psychology. Yeah. You can root out the poor accidental habits and establish in their place the good habits approved by custom. You need to be socially acceptable, children. You do. Seen and not heard. Also, why do they always do this? In old, like, movies and TV, they always send the girls to bed and up in the morning with all their makeup on. And it's like, 
Well, it's kind of like the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, where she, like, gets up in the middle of the night just to, like, curl her hair and everything so she looks all nice and prim and proper, and I think she puts makeup on, too. Yeah. This is a terrible yeah. standard to set. <laughs> Does she have sombreros on her... on her... She has sombreros on her... Is on, that what they are? I think so. Oh my gosh. I think they're sombreros. I hate when that happens, like, when you're, like, comfy and then you, like, yeah. remember that you have to, like, get up and, like, you're like, oh, I forgot to brush my teeth and then yeah. you, like, have to get up. I hate yeah. that. I was sadly folding it. Poor Barbara. She's like, this will make me feel better. Across the street, Helen's light goes out. Reasonable hours are part of her pattern. That camera pan, though. Well, you've had a hard day. But staying awake to think about it won't help it any. <laughs> it's not gonna give her a break at all. Go to bed early for a change. She just cleaned your room for you, narrator. Like, my goodness. Stand and washed her hair and did her nails, too, because she, she made a big show of showing, looking at her nails. They're giving her an existential crisis and then shaming her for the existential crisis. Go to bed early for a change. And that's the end. McGraw, produced for McGraw Hell Book Company. <laughs> Knickerbocker. That's fun. I don't want to take life advice. Like, like, no, no shame, but I don't, I don't think they could bully me with the name like Knickerbocker. No. Yeah. No. I feel sad. Like, <laughs> I feel like they both were struggling in their own ways, and they were doing their best, and somehow one happened to be a little bit more socially acceptable than the other. Poor Barbara. Yeah, I know. I feel like that narrator is like the worst supervillain ever. Really, she is. Yeah. She really she's is. She's the worst. She is. She's like an amalgamation of like all the negative like lizard brain yeah. thoughts that everybody yes. said. Yes. But, but like we're giving credence to her. Why yeah. are we doing that? Yeah. I was just this morning watching TikToks that were just like helping people who are like mentally ill or neurodivergent yeah. and like showing like alternatives for like alternative ways to like go through your day mm -hmm. if you struggle. So like it's weird to see how blunt they used to be with children. No wonder. No wonder everyone's so screwed up. <laughs> I mean, I, to a certain extent and 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 then I guess it's sort of sort of deep like, you know, you you have to acknowledge where people have come from because of how they are now. But they've also made conscious decisions in their lives too. So like yeah. If, you know, because they're adults. Yeah. But, like, this is obviously where they came from, and boy, howdy, does that bring... Yeah. I, my grandma was probably about the age that this was playing in school. Like, people yeah. her age probably sat down and, like, actually seriously were shown that. Yeah. And probably felt terrible. Oh, yeah. And they were probably very young children. Yeah. My mom, she she wasn't a very, a very, she's a little, well, she, she describes herself as very prickly. And it's, she, I don't think she was, but according to my grandmother, she was. And so my grandmother always said, pretty is as pretty does. <laughs> and so my mom grew up thinking she was ugly. Aww. And she was, like, amounted to nothing because she wasn't pretty. She wasn't pleasant. Like, and it's like, no, this is the standard that nobody can reach, not even adults. No, and we have, like, impossible standards in every aspect of life. Yeah. But yeah, especially, like, especially in this time period, especially for women. Yeah. It was just another level, man. I couldn't do it. No. Just the amount of time, like, I woke up this morning and, like put my hair back and was like, look at me. Yeah. I'm excelling today. I can't imagine, like, rolling my hair every night and, like, doing all the I things mean, that they had to I, do. I mean, I got up and I brushed my hair and I put clothes on and I drove. And Winning. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, that's just, that's exceptional, I think, you know? Yeah. It just... It is. So, yeah. It's really funny, but also I think it's really important to remember that, like, I, I don't know. We, we should be nicer to ourselves. We should definitely be nicer yeah. to ourselves. When she took her advice, it was still wrong. It was still never good. It was never, good job, Barbara. No, she never got any of that. Well, Barbara good did... job, Barbara. You did a good job. She di You did a good job. She needs a hug. She does. They literally were like, we need to teach girls how to whatever. So let's pit them against other girls. Yeah. Let's get them into that habit really early. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which is funny because now nowadays, like, I, obviously it still happens, but... I've found that women are a lot more supportive of other women now than they used to be, and definitely more than men are supportive of men. So I'm glad at least women have kind of started to break that, but... Yeah, we should normalize just being supportive of... Everybody. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you you never know what what people are are going through. I know that there's a lot of a lot of people that, especially who work on set, they're like, oh, so and so actor, you know, they're so rude. They were so rude. Well, you don't know what they were going through that day, and not everybody is pleasant at all at all times. Like, yeah, my grand my granddad, he's he's 
sweet. He's like, he talks about like, you know, he said to me one time, he's like, you know, if ever like, you know, I get cut off in traffic or somebody's rude yeah. to me, I stop and wonder like, what, what has their be- day been like? Yeah. And you know, it's just cute because it's like, he's right. Like, yeah. we, if we thought about each other like that, we would be nicer to each oh, other. definitely. You know, instead oh, of just definitely. like looking for reasons to hate each other. Exactly. You know. Exactly. A little grace goes a long way. Yeah. Can you imagine the standard that this poor popular girl has, has gone to as well? Like she's, it's just... Yeah. Just a roller coaster of emotions. Poor everybody in that film, except for the narrator. She doesn't get any pity. So do us a favor, drop us drop me a comment and let me know what your like life hack is when yeah. you're having a tough day. Yeah. yeah. Just let's you know, get some good let's get some good advice in here. I personally and and I what I personally like to do is if I'm having a really bad day, I decide that I'm going to make one person smile. Oh. That's that's my thing, and and usually, hopefully, it's somebody that I'm only seeing in passing. Like maybe it's a it's a grocery store clerk or something, and I'll just compliment them, or I'll just you know say something funny, or 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 just you know just be nice. Like you know, I like your shirt, I like your hair, you know, something just little, and and that makes me feel better because I tried, <laughs> <laughs> and I know that sounds really awful, but I tried to make the world a better place. So. That's cute. I like that. Yeah. I definitely, like, especially, all the time, but especially if I'm, like, feeling self-conscious, I'll try to, like, every person I talk to, like, single out one thing that I like yeah. about them, like, their glasses or yeah. their whatever, and, like, because then, then everybody feels better. Yeah. Because then it just changes the energy a little exactly. bit. Exactly, and my mom's always said, you know, pretty people, like, yeah, they know, they, 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 they everybody assumes they know that that person knows that they're pretty. Not necessarily, you know, and everybody assumes, oh, that person, they know that they're smart. Just, they, they, they just be honest. Just be, be, like, if you admire it, admire something about somebody and just, you just say it because they probably haven't heard it or they haven't heard it enough or they haven't heard it genuinely. Anything genuine. Right. What's going to happen? Somebody's going to be like, I can't believe you gave me a compliment. Yes. I tried to give a gift to somebody once on set and they were just like, I don't want this. And I was like, all right. So that was the only time that that happened. And I was like, what? I don't want this. Yeah. They, yeah. I tried to give them a crane and they were Aww. like, no. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, generally speaking, like it's the worst that can happen is they can say no. So, you know, and that's, that's not on you. That's our that's our big sister rant for them. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think we could wrap it up there. Probably. So, yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Um, just be nice to yourself today. Yeah. Please be nice to other people. What's the rest of the thing that I always say? Um, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. You're a YouTuber because you're... Yeah. I'm a YouTuber if you say so because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. There you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.